Claire. Good morning. Sorry, I was having trouble with my uh, sound. That is quite all right. And uh, so we've got Claire and Eli this morning. We've got the recording going, so we're going to jump on in. So today is the second builder's call of the month. And uh, the text that I sent out to everyone for the promotion of this call is a prison plan or freedom plan. One runs by default, the other runs by intention. <clears throat> and the purpose of that is to, because we have a smaller call today, you guys will get very hands-on attention, guidance, coaching, support because of the capacity that we have today to be able to hold that conversation. So before we jump in to that conversation, for those of you that might be meeting me for the first time, I, I don't know that I've met you, Eli. I don't think we have. Eli in the black box. You're on mute. This is why the black box is a challenge. <laughs> you never actually know if there's a person there or not. Okay, Claire, the floor is yours. So the conversation for today is going to be about being intentional and creating a freedom plan versus um, versus not, right? And so there's nothing that's off the table. Like literally we can dig into anywhere you want to dig into that conversation. A lot of times what I'll do is I'll set this conversation up just by saying that in the context of a, a fish and water, a fish doesn't know that it lives in water until you take it out. And so what most of us that are, you know, have come to the real estate community, the water that we are in is that as real estate agents, we can sell as much or as little real estate as we want and be able to have businesses that as a result can generate an income that has no lid on the ceiling of that income. Uh, however, the fish in water part about being a real estate agent is how the real estate industry is set up as a whole is you're in a sales job and sales jobs are based on performance and performance means you're as good as your last closing. And it doesn't matter what last year's performance is based on this year's bills and demands. So, um, so that is the nature of when we talk about a fish in water, a fish out of water. And so the conditioning that happens, right. And you literally, you watch like a fish in water, it's swimming around. It's, this is the world that it lives in. This is the world that it knows. It knows how to navigate. It knows how to do that. And as real estate agents, that's what we learn how to do real estate agents that are, have that as a sole, sole focus and sole source of income navigate becoming great sales professionals and helping and serving people. Maybe they go on to build real estate sales teams of their own and start to build out and branch out, but that is still the fish in water. And so when we look at changing the context of that and taking the fish out of water, that conversation becomes a different conversation. And that conversation is really one that comes with intention, right? So if you think about what happens when you take a fish out of water, it's going to flip around all over the place going, oh my goodness, how do I, this is uncomfortable. I'm out of my environment. How do I get back in the water? That's where I know how to live. Right. And so a lot of times you'll have people that are, that will say, or agents that will say, yes, I understand this idea of being able to have different pillars of income, of being able to have leveraged businesses that aren't dependent 100% on my own production. Uh, however, I don't see how I can do both things or how do I do both things? Because the fish in the water is I got to sell more and produce more and be able to keep up as the market and things outside of my control, like interest rates, inventory. Well, inventory is not outside our control. We have the ability to influence inventory, uh, but how those kinds of things, you know, happen in the marketplace. And so as we jump into, you know, this conversation today about, having a plan and having a proactive plan and how to, uh, and how to do that. that I had fit. an idea. Can you sit Hi, John. on that side of me? No, I can only oh. sit where I'm sitting. <laughs> I took care of it. That's okay. Uh, I always love like little interesting things that we're not expecting. 
it keeps me on my toes. So when we talk about this idea of like a fish being out of water, and for those of you that may be newer on this journey, or even those of you that are down the road on the journey and are like, ah, you know, how do I do both? Right. It's like, people will have the myth out there. I can't do both. I can't have a, you know, successful real estate sales business and build an organization that's going to give me some freedom. Interestingly enough, I was in a conversation yesterday with somebody that's not with our company that was talking about, uh, financial freedom. And I asked him this question. I said, uh, you know, how do you have that defined for yourself? So I want you to each think about that question for, as it relates to you. And I said, is it a dollar amount that's financial freedom? Is it the ownership of your time and being able to choose where you want to be? And if you're engaging because you want to versus you feel like you have to, like, what is your definition of, um, of financial freedom? And so it was interesting to see where that conversation went because initially it was around a number. And this person's number was, you know, last year I had $35,000 a month in leveraged income, meaning income that was not tied to that person's own physical efforts to go create it. The goal, the goal was 50,000 a month. And, uh, and I said, okay, well, let's go back to, and this is an important frame up for this. I said, let's go back to you having $35,000 a month of leveraged income last year. Again, this is not somebody that's with eXp. Uh, they have been doing it through real estate investing and other, you know, other aspects uh, to generate that. And I said, tell me about what your experience was. And he looked at that and now going into this year and he said, I feel more stressed and I feel less free because of how many more demands I have on my time and energy. And so I said, okay, great. Would you agree then that if that number goes from 35,000 a month in leveraged income to 50,000 a month in leveraged income, but you feel more stressed and more contained that you're not really free at all, regardless of what that number is. And he said, yes. So I want to introduce this because the 90%, 99% of the time when people talk about financial freedom, they equate it to a number and what they'd have to have an in income when that number happens, right? And that when that is what's happening and that is the number that's being generated, I will feel free. And so I'm here to say that's not necessarily the case. And to get you thinking differently about what that is actually going to mean. So there was a call that I was on uh, last week. Selena was actually on this call as well, and it was with uh, it was with corporate. And we were going we were going through numbers with an, an individual uh, broker owner that had eighty seven you know eighty seven agents in their brokerage. And as that conversation started off, the the person said, listen, I've been in the, I've been in this business for 20 years. And I just want to tell you before we go into this conversation, why I even got into it to begin with. And so she said over 20 years ago, I was in my local community and there was this an event that a real estate agent was holding hosting. And she told this story of like, it was at this park and there was food trucks at the top of the hill. And at the bottom of the hill, there's all the play structures for the kids and there's people running around everywhere and everyone looked happy. And, you know, it, this was all of the, the clients and the agents that were part of what this, uh, what this gentleman had built and his brokerage. And she saw that. And she said, I want to have that experience. I want to be that person because of what she saw in, in his face. Right. But fast forward that and, you know, what that looks like today is she's created that brokerage, right. With 87 agents, but the financials of what it takes to run that is without getting into details, not freedom at all. And the larger it grows, the less free she will be. And will be the only one having that legacy of the people and the agents and the clients. Nobody within her brokerage has that same opportunity. 
So when we start to talk about this idea of freedom and a freedom plan versus, I mean, I was brainstorming this with Selena this morning and it was, I softened it up over what I was going to actually call it prison plan. I'm like, what did I actually call it? Because it was more harsh. It's like, Ooh, that could be a little, that could be a little much. Anyway, we went with prison plan. <laughs> Prison plan being that you're confined in a set of bars and a certain structure that you cannot get out of. You've got to stay in there and keep doing what you're doing within that. The context for today's conversation, freedom plan of, okay, when I start to think about, maybe I'm just going to start thinking about this differently now that freedom isn't necessarily only attached to a number, right? Uh, it could be attached to a number, but also the experience that you want to be having, that you want to be living in. And then how do you create that? So that was a very long opening to the conversation that we're going to dive into today. And I realized that we only have a handful of you that are visible. Um, however, I am going to ask for engagement on what you have heard so far in the conversation that has you thinking differently, that has you thinking about yourself, uh, that has you maybe thinking about people that you're in conversation with differently as we change this fish out of water, fish in water. What does freedom actually look like? and just get some thoughts and feedback before we jump into the next level of the conversation. Hi, I'd like to share. Hi. There, Natalie. Hi, Natalie. Hi, you guys. Um, I'm a new agent to this and I'm kind of nervous sharing, um, but I really, I'm, ha I'm really happy I hopped on the call because um, financial freedom, I didn't know what that looked like. And you kind of just opened up something for me that I'm definitely going to look more into because I thought time freedom, no, I thought financial freedom had to do with not time, but money. So not attaching my freedom to a number is actually helping me so much. Like I'm seeing now that I want to attach it more to the time freedom and who I want to spend it with, what I want to do spending it with, um, spending it with those people because I know that your circle is, you know, a part of who you are. So I know financial freedom to me moving forward is time freedom, doing what I like with who I like, um, how many times, wherever, scheduling my day um, because I do have a family. So it's time freedom for me, not necessarily a number. So I'm going to definitely work on those experiences that I want to build for the life that I'm trying to build, if that makes sense. I love it. Thank you so much for sharing that. Yeah. And, um, and the bills have to be paid, right? So you've got a family, which means you have financial commitments. And when we start to like in this context of developing this conversation of like, oh yeah, it's not just money. The time is so important and the energy, like my mental energy where that can be. And then the, there's a financial piece to that too, of what does it look like? Because think about in the, in the life of a real estate agent or really anybody in the world, how many hours of our week are dedicated to generating income so that we can live. Yeah. That's exactly what I'm learning right now is that time management to create the time freedom to do what I need to do and as well as provide for my family and be there. Yeah. Love that. All right, who else? Hi, Casey, it's Maria, since nobody is uh, wanting to say something. <laughs> Hi, Maria, I, good to hear your voice. <laughs> yeah, I'm still in the process of getting ready <laughs> uh, because I had to drop off babies, but um, what was your question? <laughs> I want to share, but what was your yeah, no, the question is just anything that's come up for you based on the conversation that we've had thus far around. Yeah, I think for for me, um, it has been, I think we grew up in a, especially when we started real estate, we grew, we um, came in into a time frame where the grind, the hustle was kind of like the thing. And I think that Moses and I did it for so long until we had kids and realized, wait, like, What's the point of all the hustle of all that grind if we're not putting our health, ourselves, our relationship priority? We're losing all of these other things that we are meant to enjoy. And uh, when we started having babies, we transitioned from the grind to more of, of the subject that you're talking about, having more freedom 
in, in terms of where like we're only working four days a week till three o'clock when we pick up our kids and then it's family time unless, you know, we set up some appointments, but it's not grind time anymore. So we, we, we traded the, the hustle mindset for the time freedom, basically. And it doesn't look normal to everyone because we're not always grinding, but it's what's normal for us. Uh, for us is being able to be present parents and having a nice lifestyle where we are able to enjoy our family, enjoy our love, enjoy, and then still have those work hours, which are like the 8.30 to 3 p.m. And unless something's scheduled on the weekend or in the evening. Um, but for me, that's freedom. Being able to live a lifestyle that you love and being able to live a lifestyle with the ones you love. I love that. Thank you for sharing. Okay, so let's jump into the next layer of this conversation. Maria, you you brought out something really key and that's that you don't get freedom by not working. Uh, you have the freedom because you have discipline. Uh, and so there's different layers of freedom, right? There's the freedom that you have to, to decide that, hey, you know, we're gonna work four days a week, we're gonna cut it off at 3.30 and the rest is our time for our family and our life. But that's because there's a very specific th set of things that happen from eight till three thirty, uh, you know, on those days. And I know that because you guys run a very tight structure and are very focused and very diligent and very much working, right? So when a lot of times what can happen just in in the world of real estate is that, uh, and you're working on the things that actually matter and that generate business, right? So I know you know Selena and I go back and forth on this conversation of like, well. What is it? What does the average day of a full-time real estate agent look like, right? And we've got real estate agents on teams that she coaches, and it's like, holy smokes, you're like a a quarter-time real estate agent based on the actual act actions activities that you're doing in your day. So, the first way to get freedom when you're in a linear income equation as a real estate agent is that you hold yourself to a set of disciplines and structures. That during those hours, by by way of example, Maria's hours from 8 to 3.30, man, it's game on. We're doing things that bring business in called lead generation. We're doing things that are following up to convert business. And we're writing deals. We're taking listings. We're negotiating contracts. And we're getting things over the line. That is all that's happening. That is where that focus goes. So that discipline that happens in the actual work hours creates the freedom on the back end to go, you know what? No, I am a full-time real estate agent and I have done my work and my work is done. And, and so very few people have that kind of discipline, but it's possible for anyone to develop and to have, right? That still puts you in a situation where you're, um, where you don't have leverage, right? Because it's the dependence, the dependence on your personal transactions and how much business you can do and how many deals you can close in that time. So that opens up the conversation to creating the next layer of freedom, which is starting to think about, wow, what can happen if the money that it takes for me to live the life that I want to live with my family? Yes. Okay. Let's establish that having the time is, is so important and the mental energy during that time, right? Because who cares if you have the time, but all you're thinking about is business. You're not present with your family anyway. And so like, what does it actually look like to, to start to have something where you have the time that gives you the peace of mind with that, but you also know that the financial stuff is being handled. So you can do that when it's dependent on you as an individual you know, real estate sales agent, but then we also have this beautiful structure within EXP where we have the opportunity, every single one of us to get compensated or paid revenue share on transactions that we never physically personally touch. So think about that. If you go, you know, in order for me to make $150,000, I need to close 15 transactions for the year that the average commission is, you know, $10,000. A commission, right? That's where my 150 grand for the year is going to come from. Uh, versus, okay, 150 grand is my number for my family and my life. And what would it look like if 
some of that came from me and some of that came from transactions that had nothing to do with me. And this is where we get into, uh, this is where we get into the next layer of being able to create uh, leverage, which is, you know, can be freedom. So what I have here that I'm showing is the plan to that. And the, what you're looking at is the revenue share structure um, is, this is, we'll tweak it a little bit because it's not up to any longer. Um, if this is based on agents that cap, which meaning they pull in, they, they on the 80 20 split pay in their you know full cap of sixteen thousand dollars it's four fourteen hundred dollars for every agent on your tier one it's sixteen hundred for every agent that does that on your tier two it is a thousand age uh, per agent for every agent that does that on your tier three right so you could very easily start to create a business plan where you're like oh what if i had um, what if I had 10 agents on my tier one, that 10 times 1400 is 14,000, right? And what if I had 10 agents on my tier two, that's 16,000, right? That's $30,000 in revenue share for the year coming from a total of 20 agents between your first and your second tiers, right? Um, now, if there's an incentive for agents for the first year that are capping agents that, that are on your tier one, it's actually $4,000 if they cap. So that number, like, let's say it's 2025, you're looking at the 2025 year and you've got 10 agents that you've personally brought to the company that are capping agents. So that, um, that becomes $40,000 from tier one. And then the $16,000 from tier two, which is $56,000 in revenue share on a 20 agent organization. So you start to see how when you are, um, when you look at the team building component or the organization building component within EXP, that as agents are choosing to do their business here, the, the money that they're paying EXP, EXP is sharing back out in revenue for the agents that have brought those people to the company. And now you start to think about, oh, when you start to ask yourself a different set of questions of, okay, what would it look like maybe that my house payment, I know I don't have to ever worry about my house payment again, because RevShare covers my house payment. And then if we stack that and go, okay, now I've got my house payment and my car payment and those are covered. And so like those, like no matter what, like, I don't have to think about that anymore. And now what if I've got, you know, savings for kids for going to college? What if the college savings and the house payment and the car payment are handled every month from revenue share? And it starts to change the energy of the business and the work that you're doing now to being a, a different idea, right? Because you have something that's coming in outside of what your own personal energy and efforts are going to be in the, you know, in the transaction world of you personally producing. And so as you start to, if we go back to like what we're talking, fish out of water, fish in water, each of us know how, have figured out ways to navigate the environments that we're in. We're figured out ways to win in the environments that we're in. And we've done that through, you know, diligence and discipline and working in those environments. But when you start to change the environment, right, you take the fish out of water. And this is since you go from, okay, wow, I know if it's dependent on me, I can go sell and cover my, what I need to do to take care of myself. But the fish out of water piece is that transition to, oh, what are the activities and the behaviors now that are going to include and build an organization outside of just me? And how do I start to embrace those activities in the same way that it takes a real estate agent, the discipline and structure to produce the results of being what a successful agent looks like. There's the habits and discipline and structure also of using your influence with agents and those conversations to start to build an organization and start to change that equation. And as you start to think about it into that next level, it's like, wow, what would it look like if what you require for your family for active income for the year. So let's say that's 150,000 just because that's the number I was using uh, previously. What if that whole 150,000 that 
is what it takes for you to live the life that you're living today. What if that is now covered by revenue share? What if your leveraged income has matched your active income? And what does that change for you in where your time and energies are going? Are you still going to work in the same way on the sales side of things to generate that other 150? So now you've gone from 150 to 300,000 for the year. And is that important to you? Or is it important to you to buy back more of your time and to be putting it different places because you've got everything covered in the 150 that you need. And then what you're doing now from your personal sales business is an extra over and above, right? So what if you had the option to just be in a different conversation and say, hey, you know what? RevShare is taking care of the 150. Uh, instead of me generating personally the 150, I'm going to generate 75. And I'm going to do the business to generate 75,000. I know what it takes to do that. And in the time and energy that I was otherwise using to make that 150, I'm going to do here. I'm going to go volunteer in my kid's classroom, or I'm going to go coach their sports team, or I have, you know, uh, my parents that are, you know, aging and need help and need support. And so I'm going to go physically be there for doctor's appointments and other things in the way that I hadn't before, or you know what, I'm going to make sure that we have dinner as a family uh, consistently at the same time every night. And then we're sitting around, sitting down around a dinner table um, and having a great meal together and connecting and building relationship. Or I'm going to be available in the evenings, you know, so that I can help with my kids' homework or be the person that's taking them and seeing all the practices. Whatever that is for you, start to think about what happens when you buy back your time. And each piece of that is a time buyback. So the majority of people are going to be fish in water that stay in water and never get out of the bowl, right? In the real estate world. And there's nothing wrong with that, right? Um, but there's a mindset that goes with, well, I can be an amazing real estate agent or I can have, you know, a leveraged business where I can buy back my time. Uh, and, and a lot of people will think I can have one or the other. It's, like, how do I actually have both? And the truth is very systematically, you can have both if that is where your attention is going and that is where your intention is going. And anyone can have that, which is the beautiful thing of why we've got the structure that we've got and we're able to support, support people in that. So I'm gonna pause again, uh, just for any comments, questions, clarifications, feedback, anything that, that's come up in the conversation thus far. Uh, Clara, you've got a question. You said you thought the numbers were higher. So the um, rev share, the original rev share plan, everything was up to what double those numbers were. And in 2019, um, there was something that was introduced called the SRS system. And what that meant is that 50% of company dollar would always be kept by the company and 50% of company dollar would be paid to rev share. So all of those numbers were an up to, but they weren't factoring in that 50%. So the original, before that SRS change in 2019, all of those numbers, yes, it was the up to 2,800, up to 3,200 uh, on a capping agent. And then after 2019, it was buffered. So if you look at other you know, people that are competing now in the cloud-based space, the numbers that they show are all buffered, which means the numbers that they're showing that are their numbers, it's actually 50% of that. And so when EXP moved to RevShare 2.0, these are the numbers now. There's no up to, this is, if you've got a capping agent, this is what the RevShare is gonna pay out on every level. And then there's the bonuses that will hit the first three levels. And the fact that there's no qualifications to open up the first three levels, which makes us different than any other cloud-based brokerage in the industry. Right. There's qualifications to open up levels two and three, if you look and beyond um, with other with other cloud based models. So when you look at the numbers of revenue share payout, it mm -hmm. still keeps us the most aggressive plan that's out there. And the fact that there's no qualifications to open up one, two and three. It means that an agent doesn't have to focus on building or recruiting. Right. You could Claire, let's say you bring in one agent 
on your first level and they have a team of 30 people that populates your levels two and three, when they bring the, those people in, you're gonna have a game changer in revenue share because your first three levels are automatically unlocked and they're paying out those amounts per capping agent. So yeah, so the 20% is of the 50%, right? When it talks about level two, tier two, 20% is of 8,000, not 16,000. Only if you're looking at no no okay so I, I so that's an old rug share so let me just let me pull up the um let me pull up the actual that, that, yeah that's i mean your numbers make sense to what i'm saying i may not be articulating it correctly but that's okay i'm going to bring it up so we can just look at the company stuff um that is in here we go There's your 20% you were talking about on level two, right? Yeah. Yeah. So if you were to add up all of those percentages, it equals 100%. And that is assuming on tiers one through seven, $8,000 of revenue share. Because on an 80-20 split, there's the 16,000 that goes to the company. 8,000 of that goes to pay out in revenue share. 8,000 of that the company keeps to run the company. Right. Yeah. Yep. I didn't realize it was of the 50% because the old numbers match with the, so good to know. And then what about the, somebody told me I got this weird random number because they said they didn't pay out some because people leave in the middle or something like some of your tears have dissolved above you or something like that. Does that make yeah, any so, sense? <laughs> yep. So if somebody is, leaves the company, like, let's say you have a, Let's say you have an organization of let's just call it 50 agents. And let's say that for that, your position, you know, Claire's position with EXP is receiving revenue share of 50 agents. Let's call it $5,000 um, a month, right? That $5,000 a month, you don't take with you if you leave EXP. Right. So that $5,000 a month in revenue share goes back into the revenue share pool of total rev share that gets paid out. And then it gets paid in bonuses that happen in the first three tiers. Okay. Levels one, two, and three. So that rev share doesn't go away. The company doesn't take it back. In other cloud-based models, if somebody leaves, like if you were with a different company that I won't mention, and you left, uh, that $5,000 in rev share goes to the company now, not to the rev share pool back to the agents. So EXP has kept it very agent focused to grow and build something beautiful while you're here. And if someone leaves, it's not the company that's picking up the benefit of that. The people that are building and that are participating in RevShare will continue to receive the rewards of that work on the company keeping 50% and the agents keeping 50% always. Cool, thank you. Yeah, great question. Casey, I have a question. Just because I have several agents on the call that are new, how can they benefit from recruiting uh, recruiting since they're new themselves uh, when it comes to like, what do you think or what do you suggest their approach should be to basically spread the word about our company and our amazing programs, um, but they're not in a position to train them because they're just learning themselves? Yeah, I love that. That's a great question. So um I always say that the most impl the, the biggest thing that everybody has that's the same is the influence and in opening our mouths. And it and our job is to open the door and then we've got all of the systems and people and support behind it to help people walk through the door. Um and as we walk as we help people walk through the door there is different, several different layers and layers of support um, that are available to help get people through that process. Um, Zach, I'm gonna come back to you because I see that um, in there and there's a very important thing there to discuss. So for the, for the new agent, um, it's remembering that most people are wanting to succeed in the real estate businesses and careers. 
and that there's a couple of things that go with that success. Number one is being surrounded by people that can help you achieve the goals that you want to achieve in your sales business. And number two is if you're doing that, um, are you making the most, are you keeping the most for the work that you're doing? And are you building out, are you able to build and get a benefit outside of just the commission that you're going to receive at the end of your closing, which is what you would receive regardless of where you're working. Like every agent that sells a house is going to get a commission. But what else are you going to get financially or what else can you have financially to where you're in a position where you're actually building something during your real estate career just versus selling something? And if you get people to start thinking like, oh, well, I don't have something outside of my, like, what am I getting outside of my commission? I, I'm getting my commission, it's, which is what, you know, most agents, that's what they get, right? Um and it could be a simple, simple question is what's your company's built in retirement plan so that as you're, you know, getting those commissions, you also have the opportunity to have an exit strategy or a wealth building strategy for yourself. And so those kind of questions get people thinking to go when they realize, oh, I don't have that where I'm at. Then it's a conversation where you don't need to know how everything works or be able to pitch it. It's just there's somebody you may want to meet that could show you how you could have that. Is that, is that a conversation you'd be open to? Right. And now you can set an appointment with Mo, Maria, any of us to, uh, to help facilitate that conversation. I think the most important thing for an agent that's new is just to understand first off, first of all, um, the playing field, right. And when you understand the playing field of agents that so they get commissions and that's it, uh, and then you understand what you have here. It's not an equal playing field, right? So the um, just the ability to keep to have the stock that's growing and building in the background, ones that you get through your closings, plus the ones that you can earn uh, just by doing real estate related activities at EXP is huge. And then um, and the ability to open your mouth and let people know what's available to them that they're not able to have in the way of opportunity, uh, you know, unless they're working within our platform. So I, it doesn't matter if you're like brand new. I mean, I was on the phone, <laughs> oh my goodness, over the weekend with uh, four women who none of them have their real estate licenses, but they've all, they've all built leverage businesses and they're great recruiters. And they're all getting their real estate licenses now because they understand the power and they're like, well, you know, we know how to have conversations with people about business, right? And real estate agents that don't have leverage and what that can look like. They understood this idea or this concept. So they'll get the real estate licenses, not for the purpose of being buyer's agents or seller's agents so that they can collect referral fees when they refer it out to the real estate agent friends. But then they can also talk to their real estate agent friends and say, listen, are you, are you just, you know, building a sales business? Like, you know, are you, are you a salesperson in real estate? Or are you actually building something? And I'm with a community of people that's actually building something in real estate. It's really exciting. We're having a lot of fun. Would love to, would love to share with you what we're up to if you're open to it. That was like five different things to answer one question, but give you some options. <laughs> Does that help, Maria? Okay. Um, let's pivot over to, um, let's pivot to Zach. Okay. You didn't know about RevShare 2.0. Uh, did you, I texted out a video on RevShare 2.0 just explaining the differences between RevShare 1.0 and 2.0. Did you get that by chance? Well, I don't know. Okay, so I'll have to look back and see. Did you send it from the same uh, reach that you sent this morning? Yeah, that's my personal phone number. When did you send that? Um, let me just see. I mean, the short answer is no, I didn't. Uh, but I, I'll have to scroll back and find it. Okay. I um. Let's see. Let's see. Da -da -da -da. Where is by the way, everybody, while Casey's looking that up, if you're not using Reach, the app that Casey's using, you're missing out. Uh, it's a phenomenal app for your phone. It's seven dollars a month, and you can send mass text messages to. I I hit my entire phone of fourteen hundred contacts in a matter of thirty minutes. 
utilizing reach and utilizing the pro and it just automatically texts everything, everybody for you. And yeah, we have really, you know, robust capabilities through KV core that we can utilize, but that's not from your personal phone number. And so reach is phenomenal if you're not using it. Love the reach plug. Um, I look back through our text chat and I'm going to send you the link that explains the difference between Roadshare 1.0 and 2.0. But basically, um, the so you said you need to look at the new rev share because you didn't know anything about it. it looks like you're making less than now than you used to so i would say no and here's why so the less number is going to be based on production product the productivity of agents versus the flow of how that's flowing through rev share because yeah. it also it, it, you know it used to say up to 2800 up to 1600 but it was yeah. never paying out more than 50 percent of company dollar so the, there's no change in what's being paid out from RevShare from that perspective. What's changed is that now levels one through three are automatically unlocked and open for everyone with no requirements. And what's changed is there is for this next year, a sponsoring bonus on anybody brand new that you bring in that's a capping agent where you can, if they cap, their first year, it's four thousand in revenue share, uh, not the fourteen hundred per capping agent on your first level. So that's so. So I guess I just you know when I look at my like I'll just use one a capper on my level two. Yep. So Johnny Alanya on my level two caps every year. Uh, he might have icon this year, and Johnny three years ago I would have made thirty two hundred dollars on for him being a capping agent. No, you wouldn't have. You would have in 2018 and you would have in 2017, but 2019, uh, once the SRS uh, program was introduced, it, it moved that to 50% of company dollar. Huh. Okay. So, the, so if there was going to be more than that, it, it could be from the rev share pool, which is what is when people leave the company or are no longer with the company, um, that their rev share from their position goes back into the pool. And that's been, gets bonused on the first three levels, but not from the straight production. <clears throat> so I'll send you the, uh, it's a 10 minute video. It was a great video. Um, and I'll text it to you directly, Zach, on the other end of Casey, this call. I just popped it in chat. Oh, I found it. Oh, thank you. Yeah. I, I mean, I just, I, I, this is weird, crazy me, Casey. I literally had, I, I've been still, I, apparently I, I completely missed all of this. Yeah. Apparently I, I missed all of this uh, somehow. Uh, <laughs> you know, I've been at the XP since like 2018, but I must've completely missed this entire conversation somehow. That's okay. Um, That's so. why we do these calls. So I'm happy that you're plugging into them now because it will, you know, it's everybody's got like whatever is relative to your business and where you're at in the conversation and kind of the journey and the process. So um, I think that once you watch that video, it's uh, I think it's incredible what they did with RevShare 2.0. The people that will be impacted as far as if, uh, if RevShare went down would be people that have massive groups on their seventh level and sixth level. Um, so like, Mine was impacted in that way uh, because of how big the organization is and those deeper levels. But most people don't have organizations that look like that. And so these changes were in mind with all of the new people that will be coming in to not have to be recruiters and be able to pick up whatever happens in those first three levels. And for people that are here that have less mature organizations where, you know, it's in levels one through four. I mean, you need five FLQAs now to open up level four. You need 10 FLQAs to open up level five. So if somebody's got a group that's growing and growing significantly into those levels, chances are, uh, you know, they've already met those requirements. And so having the, all of those FLQA requirements toned down, open up the top end, and then have the bonus for bringing in new. Was yeah. a sort of. And, and maybe uh, maybe you know, I just need to chat a little bit. I have I've put honestly zero time into EXP recruiting. I've been totally focused on power. So yeah. maybe you and I need to reconnect on that. My team was the number one at power by a long shot this year. So we might need to reconnect on some stuff. Yeah, would love to do that. <laughs> yeah. So FLQA um, and Selena, will you pop my um, Calendly link in there uh, so that Zach's got that as well? He can pop himself on my on my calendar. Like, and thank you. It's 
not showing that I have any openings on Thursday, Friday of this week. However, I have not blocked my calendar off because I went to look at that yesterday. I think you still have it blocked for your event. Hang on. No, it's not. No, you don't. It's weird. Uh, maybe it just hadn't updated yet. If you use, so if you used to have it blocked on your calendar, it could still be blocked in Calendly and you need to go in the back end of Calendly and delete the block. I've dealt with that a bunch of times on my uh, Calendly. Yeah. Claire, it's um, one, one transaction every six months. Good to know. Of 5,000. Yeah, 5,000. Because people were gaming the system and adding people to transactions with no commission. Yeah. So 5,000 in gross commission income collected every six months. So I'll, I'll shut up now and stop taking over your call. <laughs> you know, good. You're good. I love it. Um, okay. What other questions, comments, feedback? We've got a couple of minutes before the top of the hour. So Claire, can I give you some strategy piece for yourself? Yes. Yes, you yeah. may. So your strategy would be you want to focus on for sure having five people that you personally recruit at least that are going to be capping agents so that as your group starts to grow and populate, your level four is automatically unlocked. And then as you're doing that, your next focus is going to be 10 to make sure five is unlocked. So that is in a personally sponsoring space uh what those like first two milestones would be five fl you know solid producing flqa agents and then 10 because you're going to be working with and helping people that want to grow in there and that'll just make sure you're always outpacing what's happening in your group yeah we're moving to 10 i have six so okay good that's fantastic um fantastic all right any other questions for today All right, so for a quick recap, fish in water, fish out of water. What's the water you're in? And if you're going to go fish out of water, which is going to be to be in a different environment where you're thriving, it's going to require a different set of disciplines, uh, not that are in conflict with the ones that you're currently utilizing to be a successful real estate agent that will be in complement or complementary to, right? So we covered... What are some of the things that newer agents could say uh, to include people into that maybe have been selling for years that they run into in the marketplace into a conversation? Because this is, doesn't matter how much production you're doing to be able to take advantage of the EXP platform. It's whether you know it, understand it, uh, and how it works and what it could mean for your business and your future. And that requires one person to open the door in conversation. So I think about Brent Gove, who's the person that brought Rick, my um, husband, to exp and brent gove was contacted by a stranger that had met him at a real estate event who had the courage to pick up the phone and call him and have that conversation right and seven years later at exp brent gove's got over twenty thousand agents in his exp organization and has completely changed literally thousands of lives including his own uh, so it is the power of one person opening the door and having the conversation for somebody to help them walk through that conversation. All right. So what we're going to go through um, on our next call, which will be the first, uh, the first call of November, holy smokes. I'm like, where is the year going? Uh, so our next builder's call will be November. This Friday, though, before that, our free Friday coaching call is going to be led by Selena, and this is going to be a great call for you to get on and for anybody that you may be speaking with. It's a company agnostic call, and it's going to be one hour free Friday coaching call on business planning and in a very concise and to the point format, how to get yourself set up to finish 2024 strong and go in to 2025 with a very clear and executable strategy and plan and what the things are to focus on to do that. So those calls are great because there's no EXP talk in those calls or conversation. It's agent talk and it's always skill set and mindset and the speakers and the topics are different uh, each for each call. So invite you guys to jump on that. And if you're in conversation with people, it'd be a benefit for that. It's a great way to like Claire You've got some people that are out there, right? Of like, hey, we're jumping on a planning call for 2025. This could be a great, you know, great thing for you to pick up and think differently about your year that's coming. Join me, right? And it's a 
it's not an exp conversation it's a it's a business planning conversation right so friday 9 a.m pacific on the link freefridaycoachingcall.com is the link and you'll also find it on our empire builders pro resources site which is uh da -da -da -da. i did have up on my computer selena will you grab it and put it up there so people see where it's at i have too many screens open you just want the link uh well i want them to see how to find it so here we go got it hang on i've got it okay. <laughs> i'm like got typing it. madly <laughs> so if we go empirebuilders.pro under the resources tab and live training schedule <clears throat> you're going to see the free friday coaching call <clears throat> you'll see all the ones excuse me that were recorded in the past on our youtube channel and that's where you'll join the call um for the call this friday if you want to get on the mailing list for it so that you get the email reminder that goes out in advance who's going to be on the call and what the topic is you can sign up for the email and then here's the uh the other live trainings that we're doing so that is where you'll find those all right well thank you guys for being on today um zach i'll look forward to seeing you on my calendar let's jump in i already booked it for monday conversation okay perfect all right everyone make it a great day bye guys thanks bye. so much Thank you.